Hello there, this is DBT, and these are the rooms. And alright, let's continue talking about Asphalt 9, and today we're going to be discussing the two new car hunts that began, well, just today. And oh boy, I think we were all very excited to get these hunts, uh, just not at the same time. But alright, before we jump into it, why don't you hit the like button if you enjoy my content, as well as subscribing to the channel, because remember that I post literally daily, and anytime that there's news, you bet that I'm gonna be covering them. But alright, so, the two hunts are for the Pagani Zonda R, the one that you see on the screen right now, and the McLaren 600 LT Spider. And that is the one that I'm gonna cover first, because that is just a regular hunt under daily events. You go over here, and there it is. The car hunt starred McLaren, McLaren 600 LT Spider. So what's the deal with this? First of all, the McLaren 600 LT Spider is a car that, to my knowledge, this is actually the very first time that shows up in a car hunt. I think it had an Unleashed before, but now there's the car hunt and you will be able to get this car and max it out if you so wish or if you have the time or the opportunity. So, as any regular car hunt, it's gonna cost you two tickets to do a single race unless you own the event pass, we'll talk about that. Um, and you can get a total of 11 blueprints guaranteed. One just for finishing the race, and 10 more, 5 for doing the race with the Cadillac CN concept and beating this time, another 5 for doing it with the Apollo N and beating this time, which shouldn't be too difficult. If you've been playing the game for a while, you probably already have these cars, so there you go. Now, as far as the rest of the hunt, you know how it works. Once you get those blueprints guaranteed, you need to start doing races um, in order to get these packs beating or, or completing these requirements, and in each one of these packs, you have a small chance of getting a blueprint for the main, for the car featured, uh, some parts and some credits. So that is how every single car hunt works. You know how this whole thing works. The special thing is obviously that this is a car that is finally showing up in a car hunt. And in fact, this is a really good Class B car. How good? Well, actually, let me show you how many blueprints you need in order to get this car. You're gonna need a total of 162 blueprints to max star it up. Uh, to unlock it to 1 star, 45, 17 to get it to 2 stars, 23 to 3 stars, 32 for 4 stars, and 45 to 5 stars. This is actually the same amount of blueprints that um, mid-high tier Class B cars require that don't need a key. So this is normal, this is exactly the same amount of blueprints that something like the Hurricane requires. And speaking of the Hurricanes, why don't we have a look at that? Not the car itself, but the comparison between these two, because they're very comparable. Credit to Nox Fury, I got this picture from a video that he made precisely in comparing the performance of these two cars. Link of this video will be in the description. Um, but alright, so, having a look at the stats of both cars at gold, we have that the McLaren 600 LT is a little bit slower than the Hurricane by about 3.5 kilometers an hour, but the acceleration is higher than the Hurricane, and that's already saying something given how fast this thing accelerates. We also have the handling being higher than the Hurricanes, but the Nitro being a little worse than the Hurricanes. So you can see that it's good, it's better in some things, it's worse in others. Specifically, better in acceleration and handling, worse in top speed and nitro. So overall, these two cars should be very comparable. And I wanted to show you precisely this comparison, um, at least over here on the stats, again, the actual performance video, link is in the description. Um, but just to see the stats, because at the end of the day, the Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider, it's a very common car. I hate to be the guy who um, incentivizes or mentions the Huracan. You know that that car is incredibly spam, but it's a spam because it's very easy to use and it's very good. And if you compare it to the 600LT, this car should definitely be about as competitive. But there's already a car easy to get in comparison to the McLaren 600 LT Spider. Why do I mention how easy or not it is to get? Well, because that brings me to the other car of the car hunts, plural. Like I said, the Pagani Zonda R. Now, this is not a regular car hunt, it's a special car hunt, so you're gonna find it under seasonal events. Uh, you go over here, and there it is. Now, if you have never done a special hunt like this, it's gonna be a bit tough to explain the whole thing, but basically, in order to unlock this car, because it's a key car, you need to get this car all the way to the maximum amount of stars, even gold the car, and only then, once you you have the rank, the gold rank of the car, you will be able to unlock the car. So that sounds like an absolute nightmare, right? It sounds like a key hunt, but even worse, because in regular key hunts, you don't need to gold the car, you just need to max start it up. Now over here, you need to get all of the blueprints, all of the epics, and apply all of them, which makes, it, makes this a very expensive car to get. And I hope you're ready for a jump scare, because I'm going to show you how many blueprints you need in order to do it. 249 blueprints. Yep, 
it's a lot of blueprints. So what's the deal with this? Being a key card, it by default is already a one star. So there's no need to get any blueprints to, to get it to one star. But then to get it to two stars, you need 28. For three stars, you need this, so on and so forth. So you can see that the number of blueprints incre increases dramatically towards especially the six stars. So you might be saying, wow, how am I supposed to be able to do that? Because by the way, this hunt lasts only seven days while the hunt for the 600 LT is eight days. So you're like, I have even less time to do this and I have to go the car. That's gonna cost a total of 32.2 million credits in order to do it. This is impossible, DBT. Why should I care about this? Well, it's tough, but it's doable. And the reason I say it's doable is because while it requires a lot of grind, this hunt to begin with, it doesn't use two tickets per race. This hunt will use only one single ticket. You have to use the Zonda R, but it doesn't have any fuel limitations. So even if you don't own the, the event pass, this hunt is already like that, where it only takes one single ticket per race. So that already allows you to do twice as many races per ticket refill or, you know, ticket full. Um, it allows you to do twice as many races. Now, like I said, you need to basically take this car at gold. And it sounds like it's a lot of blueprints, but this also has a peculiarity, this type of hunt. You can get some blueprints guaranteed. Uh, you don't need support cars. You're only going to be using this car. And this packs, for example, if you do this race, you're going to be able to get four packs in one go by beating this time and doing this time as well. Four packs as opposed to three packs that you would get in the regular car hunt without the, the event pass. Um, so four packs and... These packs can contain, obviously, blueprints for the car, parts, and credits. Now, this is the same amount of credits that you will get through the regular hunt, but this is only at the one-star stage. That's why this is a one-star pack. I make emphasis on that, because once you get the car to two stars, you have access to this, you get a couple of tokens, a couple of blueprints, and then you have access to get also the two-star packs. In these packs, it's basically the same chance to get the blueprints on parts but you will notice that the that the credits are a little bit higher so now you start getting more credits in these races even if you don't get the blueprint you get this amount of credits and on top of that it is said and in my experience it's true as well that every single higher star pack has higher drop rate for the blueprints so the higher the stars that you have it at the easier it becomes to get the blueprints so for example, because I already had the car at three stars because of the Unleashed before, some time before, and Grand Prix and whatnot, I had the car at three stars, so I had the chance to go straight into this one. And over here, for example, if we look at the three star pack, again, all of this looks the same, but I'm already getting a lot more credits than in a regular hunt. And like I said, the drop rate is higher. Now let's jump ahead a little bit. I don't have access to higher, um, higher uh, stages just yet because I don't have the car at four five stars yet or even at six but for example let's go to the five star pack and over here again same thing with the tokens the blueprints five star pack again it has oh wow this is actually even more interesting it wasn't like this for the for the hunt of the um ultima over here you can get two blueprints at once and even some epic and look at the credits 10 and 5 000. that's so much more credits that you can get in a regular hunt so while it is incredibly expensive to get this car, like I said, 32 million to get this car to gold, assuming you get all of the blueprints and all of the epics, this event by itself, by grinding it a lot, allows you to get a lot of credits. And if we look at the last stage, when you already have the car at six stars, you don't need more blueprints. So this is exclusively about getting epics, but look at the credits, 15,000 and 7,500 7, credits. So the drop rate of the blueprints increase and the drop or, or rather the amount of credits that you get also increase as you go further and deeper into the event. And like I said, this is absolutely doable. It requires a lot of grind, yes, but it is doable. Now, why do I care so much about this? Well, let's have a look at the stats of this car. And as you can see over there, credit to Asphalt 89. This is where I got the um, this screenshot from. Um, here's the stats at gold of the car, because remember, you're going to get the car at gold, so this one does matter to see it at gold. Now we have a Class A car, 6 star, which is gonna make it so that it only has three fuel regularly, which is very little fuel. But uh, maximum rank of 4158. And let's have a look at the stats themselves. Top speed of 368. It's above average in class A. Acceleration very good of 84.5. Handling 57, it's kind of bad. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And Nitro 67.54. Now, if you look at the stats, 
Uh, and compared against something like the Huayra BC, another Pagani that you can get relatively easy in class A, the Pagani Huayra R, uh, excuse me, Huayra BC, not Huayra R, Huayra BC. Um, that car is in general better, though it's a little bit slower and accelerates slower, but the handling is higher, the drifting is amazing, and the Nitro is amongst the best of the entire game. And I want to make emphasis on the handling because this poor car drifts horrible, the Zonda R. It drifts really bad. So you might be thinking, DBT, you're saying that there's another car in class A that it's better in general and it drifts better, it's more usable, so why should I care about the Zonda R? It's not that you have to care about this car, it's about caring, uh, or, or rather, it's caring about the opportunity to get this car. As it's the case in, in, in this game, the higher the class, the rarer and the more difficult cars are to get. Like class B cars are relatively easy to get, not these high ones, but let's let's say something like, I don't know, the Apollo A and the DBS Super Legera. Um, a bunch of cars that you can get easy, the Corvette Grand Sport, the Vantage GT12, like I said, the Huracan. Those are really good cars in class B, but if we jump into class A, and by the way, those cars are easy to get, um, if we go into A, uh, there's less opportunity to get good cars, and even though the Zonda R is not amazing, it's not a bad car either. So long as you can deal with the bad drift, it should actually perform quite alright. And if we have, for example, a look at the cars that I have, a lot of them are not upgraded. But I don't have a lot of Class A cars, so to me it is important uh, to, to get more Class A cars, because even if they have little fuel, like this thing that normally would have 3 fuel, the Zonda R is going to have 3 fuel, the Glickenhaus is going to have 3 fuel, the Onyx is going to have 3 fuel. Well, guess what? If I have 4 of these cars, I have 12 fuel in total to share between them. So the more cars that I have, the more opportunity I have to play for a little bit longer and not have to worry so much about the refueling of this one car that is going to take 4 hours. And then on top of that, this car um, was available also at some point, like I mentioned earlier, in a, I think there were a couple of Grand Prix for this car, at least one for sure, and there was also an Unleashed. But you know that a Grand Prix, it's difficult to get the car if you don't have crazy skills, and if you, if you get bad luck in the, uh, let's say, the matchmaking for it, and you get a bunch of aliens in, your, in the tier that you're participating, you're not going to get the car, which was the case for me. Uh, maybe it wasn't aliens, but simply players that play better than I do. And then in the Unleash, you need to spend a bunch of tokens in order to 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 basically max start this car and get the key guaranteed. So the fact that now we have a way to get this car for free, 100% for free, that is actually pretty good in my opinion. On top of that, because it's a car that you will get at gold. Now this is a more exaggerated case, but that is exactly what happened for me. In you can see that class S, I don't have a lot, not super good. But I do have a Golden Ultim Ultima RS, and while this is not the best car, not even the fastest in any way, shape or form, it's still a pretty decent car of Class S. Now, if I had gone with the idea, it's not amongst the best, so I don't want it, I wouldn't have an Ultima RS at gold, because this also had some months ago a uh, special hunt, and I grinded it, and I was able to get the car, get the key, and unlock it, because I golded it. I spent, this is like 40 million or something to get it. It was a bit of a pain in the rear, but it was doable. So that's why I'm making so much emphasis on this being a decent opportunity to get a class A car that used to be much more difficult to get. You can unlock it and get it at gold. And like I said, the fact that over each one of these stages, you get easier chance to get the blueprints as well as getting more credits allows you to unlock this car. So. At the end of the day, this will all be a matter of preference. If you want a good Class B car and you want to grind that hunt, you're free to do that. I personally am going to focus on the Zonda R and hopefully, if I, if I still have time after that, I will go for the McLaren 600 LT and I might even get the, the, the event pass. Because by the way, the event pass does not affect this hunt. You know how in the once you get the event pass, uh, let's go back to a regular hunt. If you get the, the event pass, like I said, it's going to cost you one single ticket, right? And it's also going to double the amount of packs that you're going to get. So if you do a class C race and you beat all these times, you're going to get not only three packs, you're going to get six packs. So that speeds up the process of getting the car by a lot. And then on top of that, with the additional tickets you're going to get and the lower ticket refill time, it's going to allow you to get uh, cars from car hunts much, much easier than if you're doing it free to play. But like I said, the thing about the special hunt is that that is mostly unaffected by the event pass. If you get the event pass and you go into any race, you're not, get, you're not gonna get double this, because this is not a daily event. This is a special one. So this will remain the same. Now you still get the advantage of getting some additional tickets and faster ticket uh, refill. But other than that, 
there's no other benefit. So literally, this is completely free to play, able, doable, doable, able. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, right? So uh, that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna focus on the Zonda R. I'm gonna try to not try. I'm gonna unlock it. I'm gonna gold it. Uh, like I said, I have a bunch of credits I've been saving, and I'm still gonna get a lot of credits through all of the grinding that I need to do on this. And actually, the drop rate has been pretty good so far. Like I said, I already had the card of three stars. I was able to get about 11 blueprints guaranteed, uh, six from the three stages, plus the, I think I got five from over here. Yeah, five blueprints over here. So that's 11 blueprints that I had guaranteed. So from when this started, I had nine blueprints plus 11, it was 20. So that makes, makes it that I have gotten 16 blueprints by doing a couple of full runs of my tickets. Um, so the drop rate at three stars, it's pretty good already. So I'm looking forward to get it to four stars, five stars, and eventually even up to six stars, so that not only do I get the epics, I also get a lot of credits recouped from doing these races a bunch of times. But like I said, this is completely subjective. It's which card you prefer. I just wanted to present all this information so that you have a better idea. Like I said, special hunts are, well, quote unquote special. So we don't know if this hunt will ever come back and we will have another opportunity to get a golden Pagani Zonda R. While regular hunts, while they take a long time to repeat, they do repeat. Like we not, some time ago we already had this hunt, so no problem. We've had this hunt like three times already. So it seems likely that this hunt is gonna return maybe in like a year or so. So that is why I'm not super concerned about it. I'm still gonna try to get it, don't get me wrong. But my priority is getting the card that I don't know if it will come back. And on top of that, I really, really, really like the look of this card. It's one of my favorites, so why not? But all right, if you found this useful, informative, or whatever, hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.